Lots going on here today. Uh, we want to pivot hard here, and we want to talk uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, and we want to talk drugs and all that kind of stuff, and we can do that. Well, and one of the biggest winners of the day. Biggest right? winners of the day. Stefan Bansell, CEO of Moderna. That is a NASDAQ-traded stock. MRNA is the ticker to put into your uh, Bloomberg terminal. You know, nobody, I guess when you sit around your, your Thanksgiving table, everybody likes to just complain about drug prices, right? Everybody does it. It's, it's across the aisle. But... I turned it around a couple years ago and said, okay, we can do that because we, we, we always like to complain about drug prices. But these guys in the pharma and the biotech industry, man, did they come through with COVID. Yeah, I think just actually as a society, it. we oh were all a little bit relieved. I'm like, in 12 months, these guys came up with a vaccine? I mean, who does that? But you guys did. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Pfizer folks and all the other uh, pharma and biotech folks out there that, man, did they come through uh, with that vaccine. Appreciate it. Now, what do you do with Moderna? Tell, tell us that you guys have your R&D day today. You bring out all your new stuff for your investors, for your stakeholders. What's the big message for your R&D day today? Is that we're not a COVID company. I thank yes. you for the kind words. Yes, but man, thank you though. And the money platform company. Yep. And the platform is firing on every cylinders. Today, we're not seeing positive flu data in phase three. So if you think about it in terms of vaccines, we are three out of three. COVID working, RSV filed to the FDA, and to the positive flu data. In cancer, we have now products showing 44% improvement versus the best drug available to patients today, which is immunotherapy. In melanoma, skin cancer, and we're gonna start before the end of the year, a phase three study in lung cancer. So okay. cancer, we really wanna transform as well. First, is, that, is that, by the way, um, because of mRNA technology. And I'll just remind listeners, we are talking with Stefan Bonsel right now. He's the chief executive officer of Moderna. And as you said, you're not just a COVID company. You did have an mRNA vaccine for COVID that um, maybe saved the world a lot more pain than it would have seen. But you also have a flu vaccine that is driving the stock up today, six and a half percent. And cancer, uh, treatments that we hope we all hope i think are going to be successful and could drive revenue another 15 billion starting in 2028 so tell us about the mrna technology that we all kind of learned about a couple of years ago sure so mrna as you learned about is an information molecule we basically code in that molecule what protein we want your body to make that will be your drug your medicine and in cancer now what we have shown is a huge impact on survival and being able to not have recurrence of disease compared to the best drugs available today to patients. And the third chapter for us after infectious disease vaccine and cancer is rare genetic disease. We are now three out of three rare genetic disease showing positive data in kids with those diseases that have no hope today, zero hope. All right, so back to the flu, because it's we're getting into flu season. What is your flu vaccine? What is new? What is different? What it, it, just tell us about what What's you guys are bringing. What's driving the stock today? Why, yeah, people, why are people so excited about the flu vaccine? Because first, we're going to be able to participate and provide a very high efficacy flu vaccine. What we've shown in actually over studies is that actually it's as good as the best vaccine on the market for flu. But what people I think are excited about is the idea of combination, meaning we are going to show before the end of the year flu and COVID combined in a single shot. So nice. in the following years, you won't have to go and get a flu shot in one arm and a COVID shot in the other arm. They'll be combined. And then over time, we're going to keep adding more and more respiratory virus like RSV to the combination as well. So that you can have only one shot early in the fall at the pharmacy. And then you have a happy fall or in winter, you're not sick. So, but this is for next year. This is not for this current flu season. Okay, got it. Just want right. to get clear on the timing. You can still get your flu vaccine for this. Well, I'm going to go down to LL2 and get my flu vaccine. I mean, who doesn't do that? But uh, so with mRNA tech technology, what's it three to five years down the road? What do you expect that technology to tackle next maybe? Yeah. So we're announcing today at R&D Day that we should launch 15 new drug in the next five years. 15 new drugs in the next five That's years. That's kind of incredible across cancer, infectious disease, and genetic disease. We're also working on autoimmune disease. Think arteritis, Crohn's disease, and so okay. on. Uh, we believe we're gonna bring 50 more drugs on top of 40 we have 
in development, okay. 50, 5, 0, okay. from the lab into the clinic in the next five years, around 10 new drugs per year, moving from the labs into development. So what you see here is a true platform. There has never been platform in the biotech pharma industry. As you know, most drugs go to the clinic, yep. they fail. 90% of the drugs starting a phase one will never get launched, Okay. 90%. If you look at Moderna, because of our platform, because mRNA is an information molecule, we are free out of free in vaccines, we are free out of free in rare genetic disease, cancer, incredible improvements, and it's just the beginning. All right, this is all because of the mRNA technology. And I have a funding question then. What happens if, um, you know, the COVID vaccine revenues don't meet your expectations? Can you still fund that kind of growth? Sure. I mean, if you look at it, we say that this year we should be six to eight billion dollar of sales, which is still a very significant number for turnover. We have 14 billion dollar on the balance sheet that we got through the COVID sales over the last two years. And so we can fund around, we think, 25 billion dollar of R&D growth by cash generating by the business and the balance sheet. And we will also not be shy to partner if we have to. We are obsessed about getting those drugs to patients to the finish line. But if you look at, for example, with Vertex, we partnered for cystic fibrosis for an inhaled mRNA, getting to the lung of the kids that have cystic fibrosis by inhalation. We developed that technology, yet another fourth cylinder for Moderna to develop a new family of drugs. And so that's what we're trying to do is to push the boundary of science, get more and more drugs. And if we have to partner, we'll partner. But, but it, it's expensive to do. And, um, you know, because of recent legislation, the United States, the, um, the Biden administration has passed, the United States is going to not only negotiate prices with drug makers, but set prices mm. uh, with drug makers. Um, is that a concern to you? Very much so. As the rest of the industry has voiced, you cannot set prices because R&D is risky. As we just talked about, 90% of drugs entering the clinic fail very, very high failure rate of the industry as a whole. If you start to set price and not look at value that is bringing by the drugs, you're going to reduce the ability of pharmaceutical and biotech companies to invest in innovation. And that's a big worry. But they're going to set prices. So how are you going to deal with it? So we just need to keep innovating and figure out ways to go after, you know, smaller disease type, uh, selling around the world. Because again, the US, of course, is the number one market in the world. But other markets are also very important, like Europe, you know, Japan. Uh, and so we're going to have to grow internationally as well. But it's a big issue. I'm worried about it. All right. How about I always joke that in my next life, I want to come back as a healthcare m and banker because every Monday we come in and there's another healthcare deal that you or one of your competitors do. Is there something that you need to buy in the next couple of years to get to where you want to go that maybe it's not in your pipeline right now? No, what is cool about mRNA is we are the world leader in mRNA. Even BioNTech, which is a great company, they are doing small molecule, large molecule, a lot of different technologies. We are only doing mRNA. What we're doing through our BD activity is either buying, we bought a company in Japan over the Christmas break, that is a cool technology to make our mRNA operating system stronger and bigger so we can do more drugs. We announced on Monday a deal in cancer with a company in Germany that has very cool science and biology that we can code into the mRNA molecule to do new drugs. So this will do to expand the potential of impacting patients. All right, excellent to have you in here. Really appreciate it. And I know you're gonna go on television in just a moment. So uh, our, our listeners will be able to, to watch you with Alex Steele and Guy Johnson on the European Close. Um, just a fascinating yep. discussion and also a fascinating move in the stock up 6.7 percent yeah about that uh stefan bansell thank you so much for joining us stefan is the ceo of moderna again the ticker symbol for you stock jockeys out there mrna we appreciate that thank you so much all right looking ahead here at this market here we are pretty much unchanged here uh so you know we're going to be very interesting to see how this market but you know moderna that again that stock as you mentioned matt up six percent uh today down 37 percent uh year to date